Today I want to discuss the effect of microplastics on young men and young women children. There are two studies, one I have already discussed and I'm going to review that again over here. This study is from Mexico where they performed analysis of testicular tissue and the presence of microplastics in it in human beings and in dogs. And what they found was that the microplastics were present at every age of human beings in their testicles. Of course, that could affect the fertility. They also saw that microplastics were present in the testicles of the dogs and they were able to actually see the reduced sperm counts in the dogs that had microplastics in their testicles. They could not do the sperm count count on the human beings because these were autopsies and the testicles were um, collected during the autopsy. So of course the researchers feel that there is a possibility that the fertility in young men and actually men of all age will be affected by these microplastics. Similarly, there is another study that came out uh, about a year ago. And this is a study in juvenile rats, so young female rats, four weeks and younger, which is lesser than adult age. They exposed, the researchers exposed these young female rats to microplastics. And the result was that the ovaries of these female rats they became so stressed that the cells activated the stress coping mechanisms. Now our cells, when they are trying to cope with stress, one outcome of that could be that if they cannot handle the stress anymore, they would just die and would kill themselves. So the researchers found that the pathways like PERC, ELF2 alpha, ATF4 and CHOP were activated. In these, the CHOP pathway takes a cell towards death if the stress cannot be handled. So of course there was toxicity that was happening which could mean a product, uh, reproductive issue for the female rats. The researchers then found that administering N-acetylcysteine or NAC or celebrinol which is a blocker for ELF2 alpha activation, actually helped those cells to become recovered and healed. Which brings me to the point, I think, sadly, we cannot get rid of the microplastics at this time. Microplastics are in the air, they are in the water, they are in, the, in our food, they are present especially in seafood. So we can't get rid of them. So we should try to use less micro, uh, microplastics, for example, plastic bags and plastic bottles and other plastics in our homes. We should ex reduce our exposure. At the same time, because we cannot eliminate all the microplastics everywhere around, we should take antioxidants and we should talk with our doctors, our children's doctors, pediatricians to say, do my child need antioxidants? Because there is a possibility of reproductive and fertility issues later on. And you could share these studies with them. The links of those studies are going to be in the description of this video and you can show them how antioxidants are helping. So that is a discussion. I'm quite saddened by the environment that we have created. There is a, if you Google uh, Dr. Barbara E. Corky and her Benting Award lecture for 2011, you would see that she also mentioned that her and her team found 4,000 agents present in our food that cause increased reactive oxygen species or in tip the redox balance. Those reactive oxygen species then cause damage to our, uh, our cells. So let's look at this uh, uh, study just to review it. And I also wanted to say this, that the damage that were occurring to the ovarian cells was because of the reactive oxygen species that were induced by the microplastics. And not only this was happening, but the enzymes that fight them superoxide dismutases, for example, those enzymes were reduced as a result of the damage. So the fighting capability was reduced and the damage was occurring more and the ovarian cells were just now sitting 
totally victims of the microplastics. So this is a discussion. Let's very quickly look at. So this is drbean.com. Um, this is one of the studies. Polystyrene microplastics induced ovarian toxicity in juvenile rats associated with oxidative stress and activation of the PERC, ALF2-alpha, ATF4 and job signaling pathway. And if you see here, NSE. So moreover, with the oxidative stress inhibitor, N-acetylcysteine and ALF2-alpha dephosphorylation blocker, salubrinol, treatment of ovarian damage induced by microplastics was repaired and associated enzyme activity were improved. So this is one important aspect of this study. The other study is this one, microplastics presence in dog and human testis and its potential association with sperm count and weights of testis and epididymis. I had done this discussion before as well and there was reduction in testicular weight plus there was reduction in sperm count in dogs. So now you have the links, you're looking at the studies as well all links in the description see you again reduce the microplastics have clean water have antioxidants and be healthy bye for now